Hey everyone, this is a little bit informal here, but uh, I've been so busy this week and I've had this deck on my mind for almost a month. Um, and so I'm so excited to introduce it to you. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, here is, um, let me go get it. Jayom Master Chef, we're gonna have a buffet. What do it do? Well, basically we're just gonna make a very big buffet for all of us to eat. Jayo makes food tokens and utilizes them by making our creatures indestructible for a very low cost. And this video will just jump right into how we win. All right, this is how we win. Pretty self-explanatory. Parallel Lives, starting with the most expensive card in the deck. Here we have Parallel Lives. This will ensure that we create double the amount of food tokens created by, with Jayom's ability and create the biggest buffet we can. Karn, Scion of Urza, and Cranial Plating. Now with all the doubled food tokens, which are artifacts, we'll create creatures that have power and or toughness of the number of artifacts we control. This should be a very large number, number because the food tokens are so easy to create. Shambling Suit and Darksteel Juggernaut. Same concept with these two, but they're already artifact creatures, but they're already artifact creatures that have that ability. And Darksteel Juggernaut is already indestructible, giving Jayom fuel for something else. And another good option in this group is Arcbound Crusher. It gains counters for each artifact that enters the battlefield. Super, super good here. Ramp up. All right, on to ramp. This will now make a bit more sense, seeing the win cons of the deck up front like that. Gilded Goose. Of course this is here. It's a burb that makes food when it enters, food when it wants to, and it sacrifices food for any color of mana. And it's a gold freaking goose. What's not to love? Hedron Crawler, Copper Mirror, Leaden Mirror, and Alloy Mirror. Just mana dorks and their artifacts, which pair with our big boy win cons from before. Expedition Map, Pilgrim's Eye, Solemn Simulacrum. All grab a land when they enter, and they may or may not be recurrable. <laughs> More on that later, wink wink nod nod. Soul Ring and Arcane Signet. Just some cheap classics fueling our artifact beavers. Lotus Bloom and Krark Clan Ironworks, or KCI. Another possible recurrable artifact for nothing and a very good sack outlet. And it'll pair with something in the next section, that good old Krark Clan Ironworks. Whenever something leaves. And this is where things start to get interesting. Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven. You know I had to include this combo. It's too good not to, and it helps with our buffet just a little bit. Zulaport Cutthroat Bastion of Remembrance. These will pair with Cauldron Familiar as well, and eh, there's really not much else to say about these. And Nadir's Nightblade. And this is probably the best combo piece in the whole deck. We can eat our food, which triggers this, and it'll pair very nicely with Kirk Clan Ironworks, as I said before. In fact, all our sack outlets do just that with Nadir's Nightblade. He's so good, we'll deal a ton of damage and gain a ton of life at the same time. Discover and Recover. When things die, that's not good. We need to find what we need and keep it out. And here's a few ways to do that. Recover and Road of Return. Both return a thing from your graveyard to your hand. And Road of Return can also place your commander in your hand if you need, just in case Jayom dies. He's our head chef after all, and we can't keep him in the back. Glissa the Traitor. I struggled to find a place for Glissa in any deck I've made, but she seemed to be an okay fit here. And maybe she did not, who knows? But she's an incredible creature with the worst combo ever, First Strike and Death Touch. She also returns our dead artifacts to our hand, and most of which do a thing when they enter, which makes it easier to draw cards and add mana and such. Vivian's Arcbow and Rushed Rebirth. Both of these do a similar thing, searching for creatures from somewhere in your deck and putting it onto the battlefield. Very good for finding our combo pieces. Speaking of combo pieces, Diabolic Tutor, Defense of the Heart, and Tamio's Journal. The two on the right take a bit to build up, but they're amazing for what they can do. Plus, Tamio's Journal continually gives us, us artifacts to fuel our juggernauts. Now let's rush through. Once we use all these assets to find our win cons, let's barrel through our opponent's creatures. Charge through and Tainted Strike. Let's trample through some creatures and deal loads of damage. And Tainted Strike can potentially give us the infect win with our massive creatures. Now let's protect our assets. As we're charging through, dealing damage, we need to protect our creatures, and especially Jayom. He'll take care of granting indestructible anyway, so we need to make sure he stays out, even if we're somehow out of food tokens. 
Lightning Greaves, Unlikely Aid, and Kaya's Ghost Worm. These just protect our creatures and, you know, uh, Kaya's Ghost Worm really helps even if Jayom is, gets exiled. So it just returns to the battlefield. Pretty, uh, pretty great. Sack Outlets. This section is all about eating our food in more ways than one, if that's possible. And again, this will pair with Nadir's Nightblade. Trail of Crumbs. Okay, okay, I know this isn't actually a sack outlet, but it, would be, but it does a fun thing when we eat some of our delicious food. Pay one and put a permanent from the top two cards of your library into your hand. Basically a scry effect, helping us get through our deck faster. Merrileaf Rider. Simple one here, probably won't affect the board much, but it's a free eatery outlet to trigger our Nightblade. Defiant, Salvager, and Wicked Wolf. These will be eating a ton of food and get very, very big. We'll have a ton of food to put plenty of plus one plus one counters on these peeps and frighten our opponents. Gluttonous Troll. Makes food upon entry, has trample, and his sack outlet might not be free, but hopefully we'll have enough mana to give him plus two plus two a whole bunch of times by eating our gus I, I, I mean food tokens. Drawing cards. We need to get through our deck and find our combos ASAP. And here's some great ways to do so. Savvy Hunter. This is a great one. Attacking or blocking nets you a food token, and you can draw cards by eating that food. Plus, another sack outlet. It's great. Prophetic Prism and Golden Egg. Both can trip when they enter, and Golden Egg is a nice omelet if you're in the mood. Plus, they're artifacts, which, you know, help our juggernauts. Beast Whisperer. All but three of our creatures have a mania value of four or less, so Beast Whisperer should be able to draw us a bunch of cards. Llanowar Visionary, Phyrexian Rager, and Sky Scanner. Uh, more entering and drawing cards, plus Llanowar Visionary is a mana dork. And did I mention that when these enter, Jayo makes more meals for them? Cheville, Bane of Monsters. This hunter is an odd one in my opinion, but he's really cool. He will likely draw us some cards and gain us some lives, uh, plus he's only two mana. Molder Vine Reclamation. Our dying creatures gain us life and draw us cards. Yeah, that's a little bit morbid, wouldn't you say? Destroy. We need some more offense, wouldn't you say? We got Fell the Pheasant. This makes a food and deals five damage to a flyer. Kind of simple, but it's mostly used for the food. Reclamation Sage and Manglehorn. Both destroy a thing when they enter, and Manglehorn really isn't played that much, I feel like, but he's really rude, making our opponent's artifacts enter tapped. Feed the Swarm and Murder. Destroy a creature. Clean, simple. Feed the Swarm can also destroy an enchantment, and it's one of the only black cards that does that. And it's got a downside, but it shouldn't ever be too big of a problem, right? Noxious Gear Hulk. Another artifact for our Juggernauts and Glissa, plus it destroys a creature upon entry. Finale of Eternity and Taste of Death. More death. We can't have a nice buffet if there's a ton of rude creatures on the board. Plus, we're possibly return something to play and make some lovely apple food. Random extras. And here's the rest of the stuff. So basically, I'm adding all the other stuff that makes food, <laughs> just as a backup, you know? Curious Pear, Fierce Witch Stalker, and Wolf's Query. All enter or die to make num-nums in my tum-tums. Plus, the first two trigger Jayom which is always a good thing. Insatiable appetite and giant opportunity. Small eatery outlets granting a buff, more food, or just a 7-7 seven, seven giant, you know? All this tasty food has to be eaten by something. Trading post, an underused card. Use it in any way you'd wish, but I'll probably most likely use it for that last ability to exchange food for card draw. And last but not least, a very unexpected and underseen card, Fangren Marauder. This will gain us crazy amounts of life because our food tokens do indeed hit the graveyard before vanishing into oblivion. Pair with KCI and our millions of food? You're welcome. Man, this deck. I just, I just love the concept of just making a bunch of food and then having our creatures eat all of it and getting bigger. It's it's just it's just a lot of fun for me. I, I don't know if it's not fun for you, then um, maybe you're not a fun person. <laughs> just joking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for getting your continued support. Uh, make sure to follow, uh, subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. And and yeah, maybe we'll 
maybe we'll do something uh, fun here in the up next upcoming weeks with uh, maybe a giveaway. Hmm, we'll see. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next Thursday.